With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. a great way to start the season. Hello everyone and welcome to the Watson Brown Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry alongside Tennessee Tech head coach Watson Brown. I'm your host Buddy Pearson. Well the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles opened up the 2013 campaign by thumping the Cumberland Bulldogs 63-7 to this past Thursday night at Tucker Stadium. Coach, not a bad way to start the season. No, uh, the W matters more to me than, yeah. than the score but um, I, I was surprised we played team ball as well as we did. We, we didn't make a lot of the kind of mistakes that cost you games. We didn't turn the ball over. We only had five penalties. We were a good third down team on both sides of the ball, uh, five for five in the red zone. Uh, we, we did a lot of the team things that you've got to win games in the conference doing, buddy, and I'd like to save that for a little <laughs> later in the year, but it, it was a good start. We played a solid football game and thing that I saw when I watched the tape, we can play a lot better than we did. Really? Yeah. That we say that the, the most improvement in a football team is usually from the first game to the second game, but <laughs> offensively, uh, defensively, and special teams, there were some good performances on, 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 in all three phases of the game. All three phases. We had big plays in all three phases, some beautiful interceptions. Two interceptions that we got were hard interceptions. They were nice, nice plays, and uh, Corey Weber made one. Uh, Avery Rollins with a great catch on a tip ball. Uh, some deep throws, some great catches on that, and then the, the, the punt return was, was fantastic. I think he dodged some of those guys three times yeah. on the play. So a lot of big plays in the game, and, and yet still technically I think there's a lot we can do better. Well, the Golden Eagles wasted a little time in showing that explosive offense as we check out the first half highlights brought to you by Wendy's Breakfast of Cookville. And a nice new tradition, the running of the freshmen led by TT President Dr. Oldham got the fans fired up, but it was quarterback Darian Stone and Malik Hall who got uh, the Golden Eagles going early, Coach, a nice 16-yard touchdown pass. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, we, and we had scored the play before that, I think, on, uh, and had a penalty on the play, but this has uh, got Darian outside, and Malik Hall's going to be a really good player here. He's a freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee, and we're really excited about him. Here's the interception I talked about earlier from Corey Weber. Uh, they were trying to hit the little seam area between the corner and the safety. Again, watch this run here. He leaps over the last guy to get in the end zone. He is so uh, dangerous when he runs the option. He, he, is, he is such a good runner with the ball, and it's tantalizing. We, we want to let him carry it more, but at the same time, we don't want him to carry it too many times. Speaking Buddy, it's a tough call. Tantalizing. How about Ladarius Van Leer takes the handoff, turns on the Jets, and he's gone 52 yards. And Ladarius can fly, and you let him have a seam. If you let him have a seam, he just he'll hit it. Look how quick he got in that seam wow. right there. He just split those guys, and he's he's flying. And and um, we just got to get him his touches in the game. Uh, Ladarius has got to get better at blocking, catching passes. Uh, but when he touches the ball, he is very dangerous. Uh, I to speak of the devil. It's, he I mean, touches this, it at the seven-yard line. Is, he, he probably don't like to see him catching the ball going away toward the end zone, but look what happens. No, we didn't catch the ball well in the game, but boy, when we got our hands on it, we did something <laughs> with it. And uh, he's about out of gas right here. I think he ran 180 yards <laughs> Total. on this return. It was uh, recorded as a 93-yard punt return, but good gracious. Uh, I, yeah, I think, I he, think he everybody thought he was, uh, he was showing out. He was wore out. <laughs> He just fell to the ground there when, after he scored the touchdown. Cody Beautiful. Matthews, a uh, nice pass from Darian Stone, 26-yard touchdown. And, Coach, yes, you're up 35 to nothing in the first half. Not, uh, not a bad way to start the first half. Not against the team that was ranked coming in. I was proud of our guys. We were ready to play, and we matched their intensity. And as usual, buddy, when we get on somebody, we seem to wear them down. And when you can feel they get starting to get tired, then the points start coming quicker and quicker and quicker. So I thought that's what happened. It was a very hot night in the game, and, and I thought they got tired about middle of the second quarter. Did you worry at all about your team coming out and being as intense in the second half? Uh, we talked hard about it at the half. Uh, there was times last year I didn't think we did that, or two years ago when we won the championship, we kind of let people hang around 
and then put them away in the fourth quarter. I thought this year we put them away in the third quarter, and then we're able to put our seconds and thirds in the rest of the way. Well, the Golden Eagles weren't finished scoring by any stretch of the imagination as we check out the second half highlights brought to you by Miller Lite. Darian Stone, here he goes again. This time a nice fake. Waltz is into the end zone from nine yards out. Again, that was a read play where he sees the end closed down. He keeps it himself and a nice block on the outside by Chris Cates and just a walk-in walk -in score. I'd like to have one of those this coming Saturday. The defense here comes up with another big turnover. Nice uh, uh, deflection and Beautiful catch. Beautiful play by a tip pass by Jordan Patrick. He's a freshman from Alcoa. Really excited about him. And a redshirt freshman in essence. And, and uh, Avery Rollins, uh, a sophomore from uh, Alabama gets, then Alabama made a look like a tight end there catching the ball. And that set up this 10-yard run by Cookville native Stephen Bush. Good to see him get in the end zone. Stephen is just one of our most solid players. Does everything well for us. He can run, he can catch, he can throw, he can block. Uh, there's nothing that Stephen can't do. We use him at a lot of different positions because he's very sharp. A very, uh, one of the most valuable guys, I think, on our football team. Coach, you talk about getting players into the contest. Jared Davis there with a 39-yard touchdown pass to Colton Blue. His very first pass as a Golden Eagle is a touchdown pass. The very first ball thrown to Colton Blue as a freshman is a touchdown catch from Columbia. Tullahoma to Columbia, and those <laughs> two were rivalries when they were in high school, so that's pretty neat that that happened. Isaiah McKinney, a seven-yard run. Good to see this young man get the ball. Isaiah McKinney's going to be a good player. He's a 220-pound freshman, and we really like him. I, I, a tough kid. He's on a good many of our special teams right now as a freshman, and as I said, we're excited about him. Cumberland finally gets on the scoreboard to make it 63-7. to The Golden Eagles win big, though, and Coach, you like to see that victory formation at the end of the game. My favorite set. <laughs> I just call for tough personnel and let them go out there and hit a knee. I, I hope to see that about 11 more times here before the season ends. Well, some good offensive numbers for a lot of folks. You had uh, a lot of wide receivers that uh, caught passes. A lot of running backs uh, ran well with the football. Darian Stone, 8 of 11 for 143 yards, two touchdowns. He also ran for 31 yards and two more scores. Coach, to me, he's a different quarterback from when we saw him last year to this year. He has been. He was in the spring. His improvement came in the spring. He carried it right into two a days, buddy, I thought, and uh, carried it into the first game. I thought he was very poised. Uh, didn't make every play, but was able to calm down, come back and get the next play after that. And what he has over about any, any of them we've had here recently is the, the absolute big play potential. Uh, of course, Lee Swinney set all the records. Trey Lamb broke all of Lee's records. This, this young man is just loaded with ability, and it'll be interesting to see if he can stay healthy and just keep uh, consistent and make plays for us. Well, the Golden Eagles weren't the only OVC school that uh, was uh, playing this weekend as we take a look at the OVC scoreboard brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. Looking around the league, it was EKU over Robert Morris 38-6. Jared McLean, 155 yards passing, two touchdowns. He also ran for 51 yards and two scores. And it was UT Martin defeating number 24-ranked Chattanooga 31-21. Skyhawks had two Running backs rush for over 100 yards. DJ McNeil and Trent Garland, coach, your thoughts on that one? Well, Martin's always a good team. They're always got talent. Uh, they're 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 always a force in our league, and we've had some wars with them to say the least. And I'm sure this one coming up in a few weeks will be the same way. Elsewhere around the league, it was Southeast Louisiana stomping Semo 45 to seven. It was Jacksonville State edging out Alabama State 24-22. Max Shortell, 216 yards passing and two touchdowns for the Gamecocks. Uh, both both uh, those surprising to me. I thought Jacksonville would win the game bigger than that. Uh, and uh, they say Southeast Louisiana's got a really good team this year, but that was a surprising score. They've been really high on their quarterback at SEMO, and they didn't score the points. They're usually 24, 28 points a game, and uh, that's the lowest margin I've seen probably three years out of SEMO. Wow. Uh, a couple of OVC schools taking on a couple of SEC schools. It was the University of Tennessee shutting out Austin P 45 to nothing, and it was Missouri mauling Murray State 58-14. Uh, Miller with uh, 145 yards passing through three picks, though. Uh, Murray was up 14-13 in the game. I'm going, my gracious alive, what are, <laughs> what are we in for here? And thank goodness Missouri made me feel a little bit better about that one, but Murray's only a couple of weeks down the road, and 
And uh, we've struggled with Murray. We've struggled with Murray at Murray for sure. And we, we, we've got to see if we can do a better job against them this year. Maybe one of the biggest upsets of the weekend, Coach. Eastern Illinois over the San Diego State Aztecs, 40-19. to 19. Jimmy Garopp uh, Garoppolo uh, with uh, 361 yard pa uh, yards passing and three touchdowns. They're a defending champ. And yeah. it looks like they're, they're picking right up where they left off. And, and uh, I remember being late in the fourth quarter with every opportunity to win the game here last year. And so, but I, th I think uh, going into the season, I personally thought Eastern Illinois and Eastern Kentucky were the two teams that would be the favorites in my mind going into the season. Both of them played very well in the first game. And TSU dropping its opener to Bethune-Cookman 12-9. to Ronald Butler with 132 yards rushing for the Tigers. Thank goodness we got one under our belt, and that's what uh, everybody congratulates me on the win. I say one down. You one just got to go, to go to the next one and get ready for the Westcotts and Badgers. So here we go. Well, when we come back, we will see where a former T2 All-American has landed. Stay with us. we got more of the Watson Brown Show coming up. Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. It's time now for our Golden Eagle Player Profile, brought to you by IWC Cash and Carry. This week, we visit with running back Cody Forbes. My mom, my dad got me started to play when I was uh, four years old. You know, I have to say my mom, you know, mostly, but you know, my dad's had a big, big impact on it as well, my parents. I guess I, you know, thinking back to my childhood, the best memory I had playing football, we got invited to the Carolina Classics. It was a uh, peewee tournament. Teams traveled all around from everywhere. Got to play in the snow for the first time, and you know, that's when I realized that playing football is really what I wanted to do. I mean, you know, at least at the collegiate level. Actually, when I got here, Coach Brown told me hard work pays off. You get out of what you put into it, and that really lit a fire for me. Oh man, it means the world to me. You know, uh, I wake up every day and I realize that I have to represent Tennessee Tech football in everything I do. You know, it's one of my um, I guess you say one of the honors of my life, something that I'm really very, very, very proud of. It's actually uh, probably uh, one of the best decisions that the coaching staff could have made for me. I came in, you know, I was a, like a typical freshman, sophomore guy, uh, a little wet behind the ears, uh, immature. You know, I wasn't really dedicated as hard as I should be. And uh, then I, after I realized I had to sit out of year and watch my teammates fight and battle and all that, you know, it just made me, you know, super, super hungry to uh, get back out there and be with my team and not only get back out there but but to be the best player that I could be for my team. Yeah, I had a uh, in our the uh, the conference championship year, uh, com conference championship season, I uh the first play of the uh, playoff game, uh, I, I went to catch a kickoff. It didn't go so well. I tried to dive on top of the ball. I got hit. I tore my labrum and uh, you know, banged up my rotator cuff. I had to have a uh, capsular shift, uh, shoulder surgery. Uh, I couldn't do anything for six months. Uh, after that, I, I hit the weight room, got bigger, faster, stronger, and uh, I'm ready to be back this year. And I'm Cody Forbes. And as you can see, Cody Forbes back on the field. He actually led the Golden Eagles in rushing Thursday night, eight carries for 69 yards. Yeah, glad to get Cody back. Co Cody gives you a little bigger body, and he's a slasher. He's a hard runner. Um, he wasn't one of those 24 surgeries that we talked about last year. He was, he was before the season started surgery, and so we just went ahead and red, redshirted him uh, in a medical way. And uh, so Cody now has a junior and senior year left to play, and, and he, he will be a, a big factor this year on the team. Yeah. Well, it's time now for Athletics in the Community, and this is brought to you by Pepsi. This week we take a look at helping out Mustard Seed Ranch. Let's take a look. My name's Greg Julian, uh, here at the Mustard Seed Ranch, me and my wife are house parents. We've been house parents of the boys' home for, since the beginning, for almost five years. And uh, it's just such a wonderful job and we get such a blessing out of it and we've got some great kids here at the ranch. Well, uh, to my left shoulder, it looks like we've got the TTU football, football team. Uh, we've got the offense and defensive linemen. Uh, and they, uh, I don't think uh, the post hole diggers fit some of their hands, hey, but they're giving it their best shot. <laughs> We've uh, started up equestrian therapy program here on the ranch. So uh, our kids here on the ranch will be riding horses. And so that's another thing that we're looking forward to and the kids are as well. Well, overall, we're just out here having fun with the Well, right now we're digging holes right now, put some logs in the holes, I guess, for a fence. We have some more guys painting the fence and got up here doing hard work for the ranch and trying to make the ranch look a, a better place, you know. 
But right now I'm digging holes. Right now I got my digger right here with me. Uh, I just finished my, my my fifth hole right here. So, you know, it's hard work out here sweating. You know, I got some of the d linemen and O-linemen with me right now digging holes, and we're just having a good time right now. Well, we're digging these posts, and we're we're trying to make a nice little fence, and uh, me and Ian are here, and we got to make sure that all the posts are level and straight. That way, otherwise, you'll have a crooked fence, and that's not very good if that happens. So, well, it's a great feeling to be able to help these, you know, help the ranch and help the kids and be able to meet the kids and, you know, be a good influence from the community and, you know, somebody they can, hopefully they can look up to and, you know, something to that accord. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, when you're doing something good for somebody, it's, you kind of have, you can kind of forget about the hot day and the, you know, bad, you know, not necessarily what you want to be doing on Saturday, but when you're here helping people, it is what you want to do. Coach, I've dug many a hole. I know that's not an easy task. Good to see those guys out there doing that. Whether you've dug them or not, that's not easy. Yeah. And I don't think many of these guys have dug holes before. So <laughs> it was it was neat watching them. I think they enjoyed it and got a lot out of it and and uh, left with a good taste in their mouth. And I'm very proud of them. That was a hard day. They were out there for about six hours. So it was a, a neat deal. And how important is it to see your guys out there in the community helping folks out like that? It's very important to me. I. I I think that once you do that, you feel as good for yourself as you do who you're trying to help. Yeah. And until you go do that, you don't understand that. And I think it's neat that our kids uh, now want to do those kind of things. And we, we had to uh, turn some kids down. We just didn't have enough um, diggers. I mean, we didn't have enough uh, equipment for them to use. So it was, it was really a neat day, and I'm very proud of them. Well, the Golden Eagles have had several All-Americans who have gone on to play in the NFL, and one of those players is Frank Omiel, who is featured in our Where Have They Landed segment, which is brought to you by FCS Football. My position coach when I was here, I had two coaches while I was here. Uh, coach McAdoo, who was an O-line coach uh, when I first got here, he coached in the Canadian League. That was kind of his uh, pass. Uh, I credit him for, you know, getting me tough, you know, uh, I'll never forget some of the things he said, I can't repeat them all, but uh, my second coach was Coach Ernfeld, who uh, I call, he was a technique coach, all technique, and both of those coaches together, I've told a lot of people that have kept me become who I am today, you know, tough, relying on technique, or, you know, when, you know, your worst day, I call it, but um, those two coaches, I'll tell anybody, have really helped me develop my game, and kind of catapulted me into you know, being able to show up on the next level. Uh, looking back on when I was drafted by the Falcons, the thing I remember most, well, one was watching the draft. You know, I didn't really spend a lot of time watching the draft, especially the whole way through. And um, uh, some guys that I knew I was comparable to the first day got drafted. It's like, oh, I may be next, you know, kind of going through that whole deal. And when I didn't go the first day, it's kind of like, you know, you kind of get more humble, like, okay, well, whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen. And, uh, when I did get the call in the fifth round, going to Atlanta, uh, you know, it was just exciting. My family was excited, I was excited. I knew it was time to go to work for real. Uh, but, you know, it couldn't have been a better start. <laughs> well, how does a kid from White's Creek end up a veteran in the NFL? Whew, I don't know if a lot of people are ready for the, that a whole answer. But, uh, you know, I'm thankful for my grandparents who taught me how to work hard, uh, you know, what it means to, you know, have to go above and beyond what you're willing to do sometimes. But uh, that's what it really is. Never quit. You know, uh, you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get people talking about you in ways you don't want. But how do you handle those situations? Do you, you know, do you let down or do you say, hey, I got better in me. I'm going to do better. You're going to make mistakes, but how do you come back from those mistakes? Uh, I have a lot of stuff I could, you know, tell you on that. but. If nothing beats working hard. That's what I would tell any young guy coming into the NFL or even high, uh, college these days. No matter what level, nothing beats working hard. Can you do what you're asked to do when you're expected to do it? Be dependable. That's what it boils down to. Can I? Can a coach depend on you to do your job? That's what it is. I'm Frank O'Meal, and that's where I landed. And Coach, I know Frank was a little bit before your time, before you got here, but uh, it was great to see him back at the Golf Alumni Tournament, and uh, he's still supporting the program. And, you know, what a great ambassador for Tennessee Tech football. Well, you can see why he made it in the league. He's a class act, and he also was very talented. And, and we're just very proud of him. He's back here on campus. He's taking a few classes now. And just glad to have him back in the Golden Eagle family because he's a Golden Eagle for life, no doubt about it. All right, stick around. we got more Watson Brown show coming up. We're going to be talking about this week's opponent, Wisconsin. You won't want to hear what Coach has to say about the Badgers. Stay with us. 
Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, if you have a question for Coach Brown, you can tweet it at TTU Golden Eagles. Now, we have some questions for you, Coach, as we move into this segment sponsored by TTUSports.com. Uh, first of all, let me just make a comment, and, and it's about the, the Golden Eagle Walk, the running of the freshmen, some new traditions this year that I think really enhance the, the atmosphere of Tennessee Tech football, and 11,000 folks in the stands there on uh, Thursday night. you got to be pleased with all that. Uh, our crowds have really grown in the last few years, and very proud of that. Um, I just want to thank everybody because, I mean, it means a lot to our kids. When they feel that atmosphere like that, it just – Gives them that little extra juice to, to go on and maybe put a game away that we're going to need as we head into this conference play, buddy. But uh, the Eagle Walk was neat. Um, it was uh, there was quite a few folks for the first one that we've done. Uh, thought it was great. I really enjoyed uh, the the freshman run. I mean, I'm standing right there in the tunnel watching the whole thing and and uh, as nervous as I get before a game, uh, it was it was kind of neat to watch that happen and. And it just kept going. I didn't know if they were ever going to finish. It seemed like there must have been 3,000 of them. I know there's not, but it yeah. just seemed like there was freshmen. a bunch of them, a lot of freshmen. I uh, do have a question for you here. Uh, I saw a lot of new players. How many players actually got into the game against Cumberland? I think Rob told me just uh, earlier before we started the show it was 72, somewhere right around that, between 70 and 72 guys. Um, Hopefully we can do that again this week uh, when, we, when we go to Wisconsin. Once we get into conference play, it'll settle back in a little bit. And I'm going to say it'd still probably be mid-60s even, even at that. So we want to play a lot of players. We think we're capable of playing a lot of players. We think that's one of our pluses. Yeah. Uh, another question for you here sent in uh, via Twitter. Look like you made it out of the Cumberland game with no injuries. Are we 100% for Wisconsin? I think we are. Uh, again, you're sore after every game, but I, I don't think anybody that will miss this game physically uh, that got hurt in the Cumberland game. So that's good. I hope we can say that when we come back from uh, Wisconsin after this game. Yeah, another question for you, Coach. Were you surprised by so many FCS upset wins over FBS opponents, and does that put Wisconsin on alert? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, th th it's getting to be more and more each year that are, are knocking some of these guys off. And uh, uh, it's neat. Uh, we hope we get to be one of those one of these times. We seem to pick the better ones to play. Yeah. You know? we're, we're not uh, shy to go after the, <laughs> the real big boys, but um, very proud of EIU. I thought that was fantastic to go out to San Diego and not just beat them, double the score them. We know uh, we'll start talking about Wisconsin here in just a second, and our last Twitter question pertains to the Wisconsin game. Do you expect Wisconsin to run, 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 and run some more? They run the ball right down your throat. They're very physical and have a great play-action pass game, and you can imagine why, because they just you have to commit so many people to the line of scrimmage, buddy, to stop these guys. This, this offensive line is huge. These are big, big kids. and. And so everybody crowds them, and then they get the easy throws over the top for, for big scores. So we got our hands full. So Wisconsin was a, a 45 to nothing winner over UMass this past Saturday. That's how they opened up their season. What have you seen on game film? What have you taken away from that game? Looks like Wisconsin. I've, I've not been there. It's one of the few places I've never been, but I've been watching Wisconsin football forever. And uh, they're, just, they're just so big and physical. That's, that's what I, I notice about them always have hard runners, uh, play with a lot of big, tall tight ends all the time. And, and what you're watching now is uh, a year ago tape, I think, when they were in the Rose Bowl. Uh, but that same fullback, uh, that's not the same tailback right there. He's playing in the league right now. But they've got two tailbacks, number 48, the same tight end, number four is their best receivers back again. Uh, but what you're seeing them do is exactly what they did last week against Massachusetts, just line up and hammer you throw some play action passes. That kid that's carrying the ball right there is their number one tailback now, um, or one of the top two tailbacks. Uh, number 20 is the other one. So you're, you're, we're, we're playing against a lot of the same guys. I see a lot of the same offensive linemen on this tape uh, that played a year ago. It's, a, it's been a solid program for a very long time. They know how to win. They play with older players. They're all bigger and stronger and mature kids. And they're just one of those teams, buddy, that don't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. You, you have to beat Wisconsin. They're not going to beat themselves. They, their conservative style of offense, they look for the, for the uh, run it down your throat and look for the big play so they don't take a lot of chances in, the, in their passing game. And uh, uh, I, I'm just really impressed with them. Number 30 right there, number 12. 
Number seven, a lot of the same defensive players are playing again this year. They're ranked in the top 25 right now, and, and after watching the game that I just watched uh, uh, today, uh, watching Massachusetts, they deserve to be ranked. Coach, you play at least one of these games every year. Talk about the benefit that you get, even though you know you're out, man. You know it, it's a, an uphill battle when you go to play a Wisconsin, a, a K-State, an Arkansas, a TCU, those kind of things, but yet you do it year in, year out. Well, I think it's very important. Number one, the money that we get has d done so much for this program. Um, Mark and I have had a plan since I got here, and we've stuck to it. But number two, I think your players get better. If you don't get injured bad and you line up and you play, there's good players that play good technique, know what they're doing. You go to these atmospheres to play, I think they come back a better player from playing in these games. And that's what I hope happens this Saturday. We're going to go give it all we got try to knock them off, but uh, hopefully we come back a better football team from this game. Well, Coach, good luck against the Badgers. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for the Watson Brown Show for this week. For Golden Eagle head coach Watson Brown, I'm Buddy Pearson. We'll see you next week with a recap of the Wisconsin game. We look forward to seeing you next week right here on the Watson Brown Show. The Watson Brown Show has been brought to you by IWC Cash and Carry, Wendy's Breakfast in Cookville, Miller Lite, and Pepsi. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.